What's going on? We've got the Civic on the driveway because today we're going to be finally fixing an issue I've been having on the Civic, which has stopped me from driving it for the past three months. So it's been actually parked out the back undercover because of a leak I've been getting. Every time it rains, it pulls water inside the passenger footwell area. And as you know, it's been raining a lot this year. But it's about time because I've got some exciting plans for the car. I am going to be doing some racing with it this winter. So you guys will have to wait and see. So a few months ago, I posted this video up on EK Civic Australia. So I've had a bit of a water leak in the past few months. Um, during the heavy rain, it will pull water in this area. And I've got a hose running into the cowling panel there. And I've got water dripping onto that foam between the blower and the rail. You can see it there, which is dripping down, down here. And I got a lot of good advice on what to do and what to look out for. But I think this video is going to be specifically for that issue that it's leaking from the seams. Um, I'm pretty certain it is leaking from the seams, uh, but I can't be sure. This is the first time out of six Civics I've owned uh, which have had this issue. So I stopped what I was doing and I parked the car up because I wanted the opportunity to make this video just in case it helps someone else. It's not exactly the easiest thing to fix. Um, and there are a lot of things you should really check before doing this. Um, so I'm going to put a list above, make sure you check those before you do this. Bit of progress. It's coming along nicely. And here's the beast. So the first step is to make sure your AC is degassed. How you do that is up to you. And the reason is because we actually need to get access and it's all behind the glove box here. You'll actually need to get access to the fan blower and before you get the fan blower out, you need to get the AC evaporator out. So yeah, it'll kind of make sense when you see where the seam is. So the first step is to remove this glove box and two screws under the glove box here, just two Phillips heads or an eight millimeter nut. Set the screws aside. Open the glove box and just tilt it out. Easy. Next, you're going to remove the lower trim under the climate control. You don't really need to do this, but it just gives you better access. I think that needs to come out too. So I'm going to also need to remove this lower panel under the steering wheel. There's a screw there, a screw there, a screw on the other side, um, and this should just pop straight out. And taking that lower trim off exposes this screw here and also a screw up here. You know, plug the cigarette lighter and that's it, straight up. So the last piece of trim which needs to come out is just this piece, just the screw here. I think there are about two or three tabs in there so you're just gonna hold it firm, make sure you pull nice and straight and just pull it out like that. Yeah, so one, two, three. Next we're gonna remove this bar. So you've got three eight millimeter bolts here. So the next step is to unplug and just set aside this harness. Um, this supplies the AC evaporator and also the fan blower. And where we actually need access is in the corner there. Uh, it's really hard to see now, but it's behind the fan blower. Um, so you can see, even if you just took out the dash and left the fan blower and the AC evaporator in, you actually can't get access to it. So this needs to come out. So we're gonna start at the end of the harness. You've got a tab here. You need to unclip from the back it's like that, so make sure you push down and pull out. These cable tie mounts, you really should be careful with them. 
but yeah. This plug down here, you need to just push down on the clip and wiggle the connector out. Pull this plastic piece back and just harness out. And that's pretty much it for the harness anyway. Okay, so the next step, we're gonna need to remove the battery to get access to the two bolts which are holding the AC lines in place. So to get access to the two bolts, this battery needs to come out. So at this point, I'm going to remind you guys again, make sure your AC system is degassed before you remove these two bolts. And these two bolts are going onto the back of the AC evaporator, so they have to come out before uh, the evaporator box will come out. So now you're back in the car, we're going to remove all the nuts and bolts holding in the evaporator and also the blower. So I don't exactly remember where they are, but they should be pretty easy to see. So you've got one nut there, this is for the blower, one nut there, you've got a bolt there on the side, and you should have two underneath. So one in the corner there, and also a black one um, right there. Can see that so for the evaporator you have again you got a nut in the corner there um, you have another screw here and also another bolt and another bolt there um, and also just make sure you unplug the AC drain so that's out there's the AC drain make sure it's unplugged All right, so let's try and get the evap out first. It is. Boom, that was easy. And the flan blower should pop right out. Boom. All right, so this is the view from underneath the air blower. And I'm gonna pop a picture up. Um, this was a photo sent to me by a fellow member and it shows where there's a possible leak and I'm gonna see if I have the leak from the same spot. So I think it's right under here behind this um, firewall mat. It's a very heavy mat so just put it out of the way. And there we go. At this point, you can kind of see where the water's been leaking from. You can see the, the dirty water running down here. It's pulling under this ECU. So um, that is my culprit. What I'm going to do, I'm going to clean that up um, and I will show you what to do next. Okay, so here's the game plan. I'm going to try to clean up that corner as much as possible. I'll probably use a wire wheel, get rid of that old seam sealer. Um, and also I'm going to prime the whole area um, because there's a little bit of rust and I want to stop that rust. Then I'm going to seal it um, and wait for that to dry. And in the meantime, I'm also going to try and find a brand new cowling if I can. If I can't, I'm probably just going to run some black sick flex along that little ridge there. Um, you can see that there's some light going through it. That's because it's not sealing and water is getting into that cavity there under the cowling. So yeah, I'm going to go grab a few parts um, and I will be back with you guys shortly.
That's the one. You're gonna leave. That's the one. Okay, so back at it now. I got myself some etch primer from Bunnings. Uh, this is in the grey colour to match the body. And I had to go to a bigger Bunnings to get some of this OEM grade automotive sealant. Okay, so I've done a pretty thick layer of etch primer on there. Um, I'm going to wait probably about half an hour and then do another very light coat just to finish it off. Um, but all the rust is pretty covered and I thought it'd be a good opportunity while we're waiting just to take this cowling off and have a look at what's happening on the underside. It's good to seal it inside the cabin, but if we can also, I don't know, in some way seal this side, I think it'd be even better. So I'm going to pop this off and see what's happening. So on closer inspection, it is actually in pretty good nick. I didn't see any signs of rust there. And the seams seem to be all right. You know, there's no cracks or anything. Um, oh, we've got it apart. I think I might remove this fuse box and just have a look to see if there's any cracks on the firewall. Okay, so we're behind this fuse box and I found a little crack just there. It's a tiny little hairline crack between the firewall uh, where it meets the rail. But everything else is good. There's no uh, cracking or the silicon is still intact. I really don't think this is the cause of our water leak. Um, just because of the location of it, I don't see how even if there was water coming through to here, it would just drain through the rail. So I really don't think this is an issue. Uh, but I actually think having cleaned everything up here, getting all the, the dried leaves and everything out of here would make a huge difference because you're just going to get water running off it. Anyways, um, I'm going to clean this up and seal it off and we'll be good to put this back in place. Okay, so the sealant is white and not black like I thought. Um, in the cabin, doesn't matter, but in the engine bay, I think I'm going to have to run it over with some black paint. Um, yeah, no biggie. Uh, but if you can get yourselves um, some black sealant um, and maybe a much smaller tube, you'll be right because you really don't need much at all. Um, in the cabin here, there's actually quite a bit of a cavity in the cracks. So what I actually did, I jammed the nozzle in there. There is actually quite a lot of silicon uh, between the gap. And I ran it over with my finger just to smooth it off and to compress it a bit. Um, but I am pretty positive that is the only leak and the cabin is now sealed. 
So anyways, I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna leave it sitting for a day so that it dries off nicely tomorrow in the sun. And then I'm gonna spray the whole area with water to make sure it's definitely sealed. So it's the next day and the seam sealer is dry. I've also gone ahead and sprayed the corner there just with a bit of black paint uh, to blend it in with the firewall. I went ahead and added a little rubber seal here. This is a nice and low profile seal so it shouldn't have any issues with it warping the cowling. Um, I found this in my toolbox so I actually don't know what it's for. Um, could be for a bumper lip but it's a Honda, a genuine Honda part that I got from JDM Tours. To be fully transparent when I was cleaning up this whole area I found a big crack in the seam sealer under the windscreen. I'm really not sure if this is the cause of my water leak. It is a big crack um, but I want to be systematic about this. I don't want to do everything at once because if we go ahead and seal everything we're never really going to know what the cause of the leak was. So, yeah, I'm going to put it back together and then I'm going to get a hose out and then hopefully there's not going to be a part two to this video. Hopefully. Okay, so cowling panel's back on. Got my garden hose here. And I've got my phone set to record on top of the lantern. So I'm going to have a good look to see if there's any more leaking while I'm outside of the car, just hosing this whole area down. So five minutes later, it's completely dry. There's no sign of water, there's no moisture, even this foam pad is nice and dry. So I call that a success. A great success! I'll show you what I did with the hose. So I aimed the hose in all the same spots I did before. Down the cowling panel here, between the bonnet and the guard, and between the guard and the door. And you know what? That's what I did last time and it was leaking, so I'd say something is definitely sealing better. In the meantime, I'm going to chuck everything back together and I'm just going to be waiting for the next heavy rain or I might take it to some car wash or something. Anyways, I'm going to wrap the video up off with a quote from Billy Tran. Don't forget to like and subscribe guys for more content. It's your boy, Jonathan Chow.